Hello, my loop friends. There is some really awesome 3D animation software that is called Blender, and that has almost nothing at all to do with live looping, except that a few years ago I did use Blender to create this. And a few years before that, I remember the YouTuber named Blender Guru uh, made a heartfelt appeal to the developers of Blender saying Blender is awesome and we're doing great things with it, but here are some ideas I have for how it could be better. Of late here on Live Loopers, I have been putting in work making whatever videos I can think of to explore all of the awesome capabilities that Looper Pro already has. So in the same spirit of that uh, video with Blender Guru opening up a dialogue, polylog, open up a conversation about what could be better in Blender, uh, I thought, you know, what if I started brainstorming as I have been using Loopy Pro in my daily adventures, uh, making joy-tastic music that I just really enjoy. I truly do believe that Loopy Pro has the potential to open up the digital music making world in the same kind of way that uh, Blender opened up the world of 3D animation. So let's do it. Let's brainstorm. Please participate in the comments below as desired. And um, I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, we have the ear of Tasty Pixel, the developer of Loopy Pro. Uh, there's already this thing called the roadmap. Um, anybody can make any suggestions at any time. We can vote on it. Um, so we are determining the future of Loopy Pro already. So this here is just like some extra sauce. All right, let's fire up Loopy Pro and let's go. Uh, before I suggest the first thing, I would just like to say the top of mind, the most important thing for me to consider is I do not want to mess with Loopy Pro simplicity at all. We download Loopy Pro and just right out of the box without changing anything, you can pretty easily just make some good loop music. That said, the first thing that I would like to suggest is a little bit of a simplification. Uh, when you want to design your workflow, the thing that you need to know is that you press this little pencil down here at the bottom and that brings you into your canvas. And in your canvas, down along the bottom row, at the bottom of the black part there, there are nine different little icons, and each icon represents a different widget. Sort of. Uh, there's three of them that represent basically the same widget, which is a slider. Uh, you have the roundish slider, and then the horizontal slider, and the vertical slider. I'm not sure that's really even the friendliest thing to do to new users. Uh, nine seems like a lot of widgets. It's sort of a little bit intimidating. So maybe all three of those could just be sort of collapsed into one. It could easily be very much like the uh, loop donut thing where if you slide it wide it turns into a horizontal slider and if you size it tall it turns into a vertical slider and if you make it a square it can be that rotary slider it's just an idea I'm just throwing it out there it's a marvelous idea and it's mostly a thought because uh, I have other widgets that I want I would love to have more widgets, but I don't want to confuse people or complicate things or mess with the beautiful simplicity. So uh, I have this idea, proposal, uh, that maybe we could take widgets and, you know, uh, get rid of some of them by combining those three into one. And I would um, suggest even taking the, uh, the two-dimensional grid thing because uh, that is kind of frustrating and complicated for new users sometimes. Uh, we can um, make fewer widgets and then at the end of the widgets have like a plus. And the plus could take us to like advanced widgets. We could split the widgets into like, you know, the simple widgets that you get when you first open it up. And then you could have like a plus for like more widget options. And those could be the less often used ones. Um, I mean, I would put the XY pad in there, but also there are widgets that I would love to have 
first of which, let me tell you, um, I wish that there was some kind of a data widget. Data widget would work sort of like the text widget, uh, except for that it would just display different system variables, uh, such as in the last video that I made, uh, I was talking about how you can get the time and the remaining amount of battery power right there on your display. That's awesome, but not everybody will be able to figure that out. I would love to have a little data widget that you could just, um, you know, it would have, you could select which data, piece of data, system variable or whatever that you want. Uh, one of which would be the time. One of which would be the um, remaining, remaining battery life. One of which would be the project name. I mean, we don't need the project name so much anymore since uh, we put it right there prominently on the top of the screen all the time. But some people might want it larger. I do. Uh, and other things that you might want, like uh, beats per minute. You might want to be able to put that somewhere prominently and display that larger. I would love to have a special slider uh, just for um, doing pitch shifting when you want to slide pitch up and down that it would not only slide the pitch up and down but it would also display a number letting you know how far you've transposed it up or down like it could show you zero when you haven't transposed it and then as you transpose it up it could be like you know one two three four five all the way to twelve and then maybe if it's two active range up to twenty four something like that you know and then uh you know down to twelve and down to negative negative 12 and negative 24 that kind of thing another thing that i think would be really really helpful widget to have hear me out uh is an image widget like where you could just select a picture from your photos or something and display that uh where you want like you can you know just put it on your canvas where you need it where you want it or something or maybe even like a kind of a slideshow where you can put in two or three pictures and like scroll between them if you had that ability to do that you could make yourself a teleprompter where the lyrics of your song could be nice and big and you could just slide it you know when you get to verse two and slide it when you get to verse three. Oh my goodness wouldn't that be like really super handy or you could put song notes like things that you forget and you don't want to have like little loose pieces of paper you know around your set while you're trying to play and stuff like that just plop it and have like you know song notes ideas uh set lists anything you, you know tempo and key oh if you could just put your own image you could put and you could put visual cues i have lyrics that um it's it's kind of hard to understand what i'm saying sometimes a little bit or people don't exactly know what i'm talking about if i had a little slideshow i'm going to talk about thing a thing b thing c and I'm like, I have my iPad right here that I'm making music on. Just turn it around to the audience. If there's only like, you know, 10, 15 people standing around, it's a little intimate setting kind of a thing. Hey, um, while I'm rapping, here's thing A, and here's thing B, and here's thing C. They can see it while I'm singing it. Mm, I would love that. I would, oh, I would love that. Here's another idea. I'm not sure if this is a widget idea exactly. Uh, I've loaded up one of my templates that I use all the time and go to my B screen, which is the best part of it. I love the B screen so much because it has these little buttons down here that let me select uh, which instrument I want and lets me turn them on and off. Like right now it has this one bass two is turned on and marimba at the end is turned on and I can press those two buttons and turn them both off. Uh, I wish there was some kind of way that I could like inverse where I had like some option of that button uh, so that like on is off and off is on some kind of way to flip uh, what the button function because I would just prefer because uh, right now uh, they're all um, solid filled in colored and uh, that means that they are all off which seems kind of illogical to my brain that doesn't want to have it really work that way I would love if uh, they were all un filled in like I would prefer if this meant that they were all off and then I could just turn on two and then they would be on 
Um, I can't do that, and I wish I could. Anyway, that is most of the low-hanging fruit. Like, those are some uh, changes that if, uh, you know, if those are good changes that people want in there, uh, those might not be that difficult programmatically to accomplish. Um, I have an idea. I have another idea. Uh, that I think would be awesome and hugely helpful, but it's not some, maybe it's something for like Loopy Pro number two, uh, version in the distant future, so I don't know. Alright, now hear me out. A lot of people, uh, are like a lot of different types of configurations for their work environment. Some people love the one page wonder where they squeeze lots and lots of tiny controls onto one page so that they have it all on one page and they don't have to flip around or anything. That's what they love. Me personally, I love having everything be a little bit bigger so I don't mistouch anything and so that I can see things. And so uh, I love having like a whole bunch of different screens that I can go to. But I wish, and I wish it a lot, uh, is that there was some kind of way that some kind of thing that you could maybe slide out, some kind of uh, control panel, something that would remain constant, something that you could put your widgets and bits and pieces and doodads and things onto that would not go away when you uh, go from page to page. Uh, you know, and yes, you can put things on different multiple pages, and yes, you can sometimes even, like, control them. I have, like, buttons that I use to control buttons that are on other pages and everything, but I just, I wish that there was some kind of area that I could slide out where I could have something that just doesn't go away from page to page. Like, first of all, namely, the number one thing that I would put on that if I had such a thing, uh, would like these instrument buttons like this is what I f flip back to page B for all the time is to turn on and off more instruments and I just wish that I had like an, instead of having them here on the bottom of page B I wish there was like some little slide out thing that could maybe go out to like a third of the page or half of the page or however far you need to slide it out um and that that little thing could have my instrument buttons on and I could turn them on and off no matter what screen I'm on. I would love that. I would, uh, I mean, I would also put like the very first loop that I, uh, the, the master loop that controls everything, like the first loop that I record, I would just put that. Um, even though I don't, I don't, in practice, me personally make music, I don't really need to go back and manipulate it very often, the first loop that I make, but it'd just be sort of comforting to just be able to have it there and have it travel with you, you know, maybe I'll put it nice and big, and I'll put the time nice and big on there so that I wouldn't have to put that on every page, too, it'd just be there, um, that's just me, uh, but I'm just saying, and maybe, you know, maybe the slide out thing, maybe that's like too complicated and too programmatically difficult to make happen maybe that would maybe it would, could be the same thing could be accomplished with like a widget we could put like uh like a traveling widget where you just have a box that you could put other widgets inside of and it like would just have a little x on it so that you could make it go away if you needed to go away but then you would have like a little button down here to pop it back up whenever you need it and you could just keep it or lose it you know just you know pop it back up press the x to get rid of it or something or even this whatever button that pop it up could also pop it back down or something i don't i don't know how it could work but i'm just saying that if it was there man i would use that oh yeah would i ever use that that would make uh, all this uh page flipping like even better because the, having the page flipping in loopy pro is so awesome it's so awesome but i just wish that there was something you know a little bit of real estate that didn't flip the pages Here's another idea. On the different AUV3s that you can get, you can tap the keyboard thing and the keyboard comes on and the keyboard is cool. What if there was like a transpose up and down? You know, like you press transpose up and then C3 changes to C4. Wouldn't that make the keyboard so much more handy? I think it would. 
Here's another idea, you tell me what you think. Uh, one of the things I love about Loopy Pro and have loved about it ever since it was Loopy HD is that you can uh, skew your loops. You can just two finger touch on a different, on a donut here, and you can just spin that around and change, uh, you can skew the positioning of your loop. And that's just really, really easy and really, really handy. Uh, one thing that I think would make it more handy for me, uh, and you tell me if there's already some kind of way to do this, but I think it would be really handy if there was some way to get it to snap. Uh, snap to specific intervals or divisions of your donut. Um, because, I mean, it's nice to be able to do it the way it is, where you can fine-tune it and just uh, two-finger twist it exactly, but most of the time where I want to adjust a, a, a loop, uh, I want it to be on even division boundaries of some kind of multiple. So, like, if maybe, you know, your two-finger touch it and you start to twist it, uh, maybe there could be some kind of, you know, dot that pops up at like 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock you know and you could you know slide up to those dots and or, you know I don't know how you would implement it but some kind of snapping so that you know if you could you know put it specifically to like you know one fourth or one half or, you know just even division boundaries that's what I usually want if I'm going to use that at all um I don't know. It's an idea. Okay. I feel like we're covering a lot of really great ground here, but this video is getting a little lengthy. I don't want it to get too much longer. I just wanted to say one, real quick one last idea, and I apologize for how vague and very unspecific this is, but I think there are just some users of Loopy Pro who, uh, like myself, would love if there was some better way to do effects, if there was some way to have uh, multi-effects be easy and more integrated, just something. Um, I'm, I know a lot of people have their own effects uh, audio units that they love, and I don't want to interfere with that or make it harder to use those or anything, uh, but I just remember back in my three iPad setup days, uh, where one iPad was just specifically dedicated to uh, live effects by Elephant Candy, and I just had um, sound coming in here and getting like this effects setup was just oh, it was just a perfect effects setup in my. I just loved how it was laid out and how it worked, and the selection of effects that they had was just oh, so great. Like I want sound scratching back so bad. You don't, you just don't know how bad I wish I could just touch it and just make some sound scratching. Ugh. Anyway, story for another day. I just think that uh, something there's room for uh, improvement with um you know, making some great, great effects happen easily for people. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please like it if you liked it. And if you love talking about looping, Loopy Pro or looping in general, uh, you could subscribe for more videos like this. And if you uh, not just only ring the bell, but change it to like notifications all, there's a good chance that YouTube would tell you when we make a new video. That'd be cool. Uh, and so uh, thank you very much, my loop friends. Please do move on.